Hello, I'm Tracy Reed, and I have long noticed a trend of people online asking poor questions. You know, I've asked a lot of questions online via Usenet or IRC back in the day to various forums, to various email lists. I have gotten a lot of help from a lot of people in doing all the things that I have done. You have to be a self-learner in this business, particularly the security business, but any, any business, it really helps if you can be somewhat autodidactic, right? Self-learning. Nobody's going to spoon feed you everything you need to know, but occasionally you run into something. You get stuck and you need to ask a question. Now, I recently saw someone ask a question like, has anybody ever done... XYZ thing, whatever it was. And a lot of people answered, yes. Yes, 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 yes. A lot of yeses. Turns out, of course, a lot of people have set up a Linux firewall or configured Splunk to parse out a particular kind of logs or done whatever. It's been done countless times. That wasn't really the question the person wanted to ask, but it's the question they did ask. So they got a lot of useless answers and wasted their time and the time of other people. It just seems like question asking is not a skill that a whole lot of people have. If you're going to go online and you're going to ask a question, you're going to basically beg a favor from other people, you know, impose yourself on these other people and get their time, their advice, their experience, get some benefit from that to solve a problem that you have, you really owe it to not only yourself, but especially these other people to ask a good question. How do you ask a good question? You have to think about it for a moment. It, ha it can't be a vague or open-ended question. You have to ask a question with what you're, what you're working with, what you're trying to do, what you're doing and what the result is and what you expect the result to be. And if you're working, for example, with a piece of software or technology, you need to provide all the details. Think about what kind of information is a person likely to need in order to answer this question. What software are you using? What version of the software are you using? How have you configured it? Did it produce any logs? Uh, I know, for example, I'm using OBS to record this and there is a, an OBS subreddit and they have a bot on there where anytime somebody asks a question and they do not include logs with their question, because typically they're having problems, then the bot reminds them, hey, I didn't see a log, a link to a log on here. You need to provide logs. For those guys to answer just about any question about why OBS is doing something or not doing something. They need logs. So that's an example. If, if you're having a problem with, for example, OBS, tell them I'm using OBS, this version on this operating system and this version of this operating system. And I've got it configured in such and such a way. And when I do this, these exact steps, this is what happens. But I expected this other thing to happen. Now, there is a guide on how to ask questions. And I don't see people refer to this guide anymore. ESR, Eric Raymond, long time ago, wrote a guide, how to ask questions the smart way. How far does this go back? Only 2004, I know I've seen it since before 2004. Revision 3.0, yeah, so it was around, it was around in the 90s at least. And this is well worth your time. Read this. You are going to spend the rest of your career, many years going forward, having to figure things out and ask people for help. This works not just for technology stuff, but for any kind of situation where you are going to be asking on a chat forum, uh, some web forum, some instant messenger service, whatever, or email. Because, you know, every time you have one of these back and forth interactions, it wastes time. If you ask a, an unclear or a vague question without providing all the info, 
then instead of just getting right back to you with your answer, they have to ask you some more questions. And then you answer their questions. And now you've taken a situation which could have gotten you your answer in minutes or hours, possibly turn it into days, depending on whether you make them play 20 questions with you or not. Let's take a quick look at this. Uh, let's see. Uh, before you ask, yeah, Google, right? There's nothing more embarrassing than asking a question and then somebody says, it's right there in the pinned top comment on this forum, or you know, it's right there in the FAQ on this website, or for that piece of software you're trying to experiment with, or you know, um, figure something out with. And then Google, right? There's this funny website called Let Me Google That For You, and it actually creates a little animation of somebody typing in what you should have typed into Google and clicking on it, and then typically there's your result first hit on Google. That's embarrassing. Don't do that. So read through all the appropriate stuff, Google for it. That was before you ask, right? And then when you ask, choose your forum carefully. Um, I've, you know, this mentions news groups. So this thing was originally written, you know, quite a while back, but everything in here is still valid. Maybe not news groups, but CCing multiple mailing lists or copying and pasting the same question to a bunch of different chat groups, discords, whatever. <clears throat> so make sure you choose the right forum. Uh, search, then ask on Stack Exchange, Stack Overflow, web, IRC forums, mailing lists. <clears throat> Use meaningful specific subject headers. So notice the difference here. Help video doesn't work properly on my laptop. Not much anybody can do to help you with that. But here are some details. Now somebody has a chance of helping you. This is even better. More details. So the more information you can put in your initial query that will help the person to answer your question better. Now, not to gatekeep here, because I know some people have dyslexia and various other issues, but the more you can write in clear, grammatical, correctly spelled language, the more likely you are to be taken seriously, the more likely people are to understand your question, and the more likely you are to get help. If you are a, uh, you know, a person with no learning difficulties or anything, and you're just being lazy, that's not cool. That's not going to help anybody. Let's see. What else do we have here? Be precise and informative about your problem. And again, here, it says a lot of the things that I just said, describe the symptoms of your problem or bug carefully and clearly describe the environment in which it occurs operating system, distribution, version numbers, and so on. Describe the research you did to try and understand the problem before you asked the question. Describe the diagnostic steps you took. Any possible relevant recent changes in your computer or software configuration. That's a big one. I can't count the number of times, it's happened to everybody, right? Where you're, you're thinking, it just started doing this. I didn't change anything, nothing changed. And then you find out somehow something did change. You just didn't understand how it was relevant. If at all possible, produce a way to reproduce the problem in a controlled environment. It's gotten more difficult lately, but especially when I've done a lot of programming in the past, maybe you're having a bug in your program. You can't quite figure out what's causing it. If you can pare down the code into the smallest bit of code, the simplest pro program that you can come up with, that demonstrates the problem, the better off you will be. You know, instead of having to ship someone your 10,000 line project with Docker file or make file or whatever, and they got to build it themselves and try to run it and see why the, why it doesn't compile properly or crashes or whatever. If you can cut that down to just a, the simplest base case that demonstrates the problem, quite often in the process of doing that, 
you find out what the problem is. But even if you don't, it makes it a whole lot easier for someone else to understand what's going on and tell you what the problem is. Volume is not precision. Yeah, you need to be precise and informative. I think concise is important there also. I know I have trouble with that. Maybe you're ready for this video to be over already. So we'll move it along. Um, yeah, don't grovel. Describe this problem symptoms, not your guesses. So on, I'll let you go through the rest of this, <clears throat> but this is a very good guide, which will benefit you throughout the rest of your career. How long will this take to read? I don't know, 10, 20 minutes? Maybe 15. Questions not to ask. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. It is well worth the time. You will save yourself in time wasted asking poor questions and not getting the answers you need. If you can learn how to ask questions the smart way. So again, that is how to ask questions the smart way by Eric Raymond. Google it and you'll find it and it'll save you a lot of time.